Brett? Hello? You're on Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Uh, yeah, um, about two years ago, I turned 15. I moved out on my own, and I moved in with a girlfriend who was 28. Wow. She, Why'd you move out? Uh, just a lot of family problems. Like, I took. I was in, put in uh, foster homes, but I moved out. I was living on my own. What was going on in the home? Uh, just a bunch of family problems. Like what? <laughs> um, just I, I had some problems in high school. What was going on in the home? Hey, Mr. Vasive, it's a two-hour show. Let's go. I shot up my high school with a 357, and my dad didn't want me living there after that, so he put me in a foster home. All right. You took a 357 Magnum, the, oh, the, world's, the world's most powerful handgun. I'm quoting uh, Clint Eastwood now, by the way. You went to your high school and you shot it up? Yeah. What, what, was it? Wait a minute. I, I, I'm not getting past this for just one second. Was it during school hours? No, it was on a Saturday. Oh, all right. Well, it's a weekend. What's the big deal? <laughs> yeah. Brett, no, but, but, no. but people don't just go do that just because. I mean, there obviously was something else going on in the home that sort of culminated in that action. Yeah. What was going on in the home? Uh, nothing. I got suspended from school. No, not what you did, what your behaviors were. What was going on with you? What was going on in your home that led you to that point? I got suspended from school for distribution of over-the-counter drugs, which I didn't do, and she called me a bastard to my face. Who did? Principal. Bastard? So I, yeah. Really? You were just training to be a pharmacist. <laughs> That's what Drew does all day. <laughs> Brett, what was going on in so your home? I just got pissed off and did that when it was my birthday, got drunk and shot up the high school. Whose gun was it? My friend's dad. Were you ever struck by your parents? Was Yeah, I was beat up by my okay. dad. That's but. what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, we're getting okay. to it. Okay, now, but, you got to understand, people that, go, that leave home for good before the age of 18, almost without exception, have gone through some kind of abuse, physical, sexual, whatever. You were physically abused, Brett. That's what led you to behave the way you did and act out and ultimately shoot your school up. I mean, I'm not defending what you did. Believe me, you did, you did bad. You didn't do the right thing. Yeah. But it's not that it was out of the blue. You were, you know, It's not as though nothing was happening to you emotionally that generated these behaviors. You had a messed up family, if I agree. Well, he was saying he came from a messed yeah, up home. Yeah, but he home. wasn't saying what happened. And the fact that people don't understand what a messed up home is, the fact is that he was abused badly, I'm sure badly. Yeah, and, he was an alcoholic yeah. father. So. And he left home, and the living home was probably an okay thing. And let do. me just say this. When Brett then gets popped and is in front of the judge, and they're talking about sentencing Brett, I think they ought to pull pops off of his well, stupid barca well, lounger and his drunken hey. stupor, drag him in and paddle that mf okay. yeah. because he is the reason the, Brett the, the, is look, involved. I, I, but you, he, Mr. Be Responsible for Our Actions here, Adam. Yeah. You, you can't let people not be responsible for their behaviors. He, you know, no, Brett, I want the dad to be I, I responsible it. for ruining Brett. Uh, but Brett still has to be responsible for what he does. Okay. Paddle one, both I, of I them. But number two, dad, both their dad, two feet apart dad and do like that. Should, if anybody else out there is going through this experience, dad, their dad should be punished roundly. By the legal system, for if they're doing it right now, his dad, his dad should have been put in jail years ago for what he did, what he was doing to Brett. Unfortunately, our system failed you, Brett. Yeah. Um. Anyways, the reason I'm calling is I've been living <laughs> anyway. on my anyway. own since I was 15. Yeah. With a girlfriend of mine, she's 31 now. Yeah. She has a daughter by me that's nine months old. Wow. But um, I'm getting ready to start school, so. Good for I, you. College. Yeah. Wow. So, but none of my family likes me being with her because of her age. And so I just wanted someone that I didn't know, their point of view, their opinion of being with an older woman. Well, I'll let Adam give you the point of view. Let me just say that given what you've been through, you are not likely to choose good, healthy relationships. In general, I would expect you to have relationships that were kind of problems. Okay. Uh, so the age thing is not so much the issue as... In all likelihood, you're not going to be with the person that's good for you necessarily. I, mean, I don't want to speak out of turn for your girlfriend, but you know, you're going to you're going to seek out kind of quasi abusive, unstable relationships, and so I suspect that's what you're you're sort of in right now. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, and and so to that extent, uh, you know, I mean, well, first of all, wait a minute, you're you're 17 now. Yeah. So she's she's breaking the law. What state are you calling from? I'm calling from California. Yeah, you should break in law in the state. You can't, she can't do that. She can't sleep. All well, right, but no one cares he's if a woman does it. Wait a minute, he's emancipated. Wait, wait, he's emancipated. You're right. Look, do you guys that. share some of the same hobbies? Does she like shooting up schools and stuff? <laughs> no, we have nothing in common. All right, li <laughs> listen. Be with me for listen, Brett. Here, all right, first things first. Uh, your parents don't get to say anything. 
anymore about you and your life, Not what yet. you're doing, who you're taking home, who you're living with, whatever you're doing. You lose, you waive that opportunity as a parent when you decide to sit on the sofa and get loaded. Also, he's emancipated, so they really truly don't have any right. Right, but there's a certain respect that people give to their folks. Like Drew's parents stuck around long enough, they gave him a pretty decent shake, and now he listens to them with like one ear when they have something to say. My parents, I like kind of... You know, I turn the TV down a little if they got something to say and and then go ahead and go go against them later. But your parents cannot say anything to you. Yeah. They 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 screwed you and now you can do what you want. Now, you're with this 31-year-old. Drew's right. You found her. There's no way she's the right person for you. Uh, I don't know what her deal is, why she's with someone who's so young. My guess is she has some some issues. But you have a kid between you and you're going back to college. Yeah, but just it, it's it's hard to go to school, work, and, and be with her at the same time. And I don't know if I should just not be with her, put everyone else aside, and just do what I need to do. You do, do need do to take you, care of yourself. Do what you need to do, but you do have a child here, and you must keep that in mind as how, a priority. How, For a 17-year-old that's been through what you've been through, I can't imagine that you're going to be capable of, of really putting, you know, raising a child and taking care of yourself. You're just learning how to take care of yourself. But, but here's what I want to say, Brett. Don't keep the cycle going with your child. You that know what I'm critical. saying? Critical. I mean, you had a child young, which is the first step in keeping the, chi- in the cycle, yeah. not breaking the chain of... And perpetuating of, the chain Perpetuating of the chain of abuse. But, and, and, and you found an abusive mother for the child. And you found an abusive older mother... And you're going to want to do impulsively what was done to you at some point to your child. It's sort of a psychological fact, unfortunately. But yeah. understand it, get some help with it, and don't do what was done to you to your child. Oh, hell no. All right, but take you care of yourself. You understand that. Take care of yourself, Brad. Your instinct right. to do that is very solid, okay? Yeah, right. you'll be fine. Thank well, you. I hope you'll be fine. Well, I, I think it will because he's got he he has a certain like survival chutzpah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be tough for him for the next yeah. few years, but he he'll he'll get him. Oh, look, you see, you hear these stories all the time. Whoopi Goldberg was like, I don't know, living on the streets or was something. She really? I don't know. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it sounded good. You though, know, people right? always when we ever talk to press and stuff, people are always asking, "What was your what was your most memorable call?" And I, I can never remember back more than a few weeks. But Brett would be a memorable call for yeah. me for some time to come. He would be right up there. 